Hey friends, welcome back to the Gubba Homestead. I'm Gubba and today I'm gonna to be showing you around the garden and talking to you about how I'm tying my food storage and my future into my garden plans. A lot has changed since the last time you have been here in the garden. You can see some structures have gone up. I've been working really hard planning it out. If you have any ideas or suggestions, make sure to comment them down below. I would love to hear from you. I'm sure that there is a experienced gardeners who are watching this and I am in the run here on my homestead getting things up and ready. And because it's been such a while and it's such a beautiful day, I thought today would be the perfect day to show you around. Let's go. Before we get started and I show you anything, I have to show you the biggest improvement to my garden so far. This right here, this fence right here, it's eight feet tall and eight or seven. Anyways, it's, it has made it so the deer cannot get through. One of the biggest problems I had last year was deer. They eat everything. Deer are a pest and a nuisance in my area. <sighs> so I knew this year I needed fencing that would keep the deer out. They can't jump over this, they can't come through this. So I am so excited because now I can plant trees and they don't have to be protected. I can plant things in my vegetable garden and I don't have to worry about them being eaten. Oh. It is an elation. This is also, well, I know with the fruit and my bees, I'm gonna be have to, having to deal with bears. So I'm actually curious to see how this does against the bears. But let me show you what else we have going on. Right now, I am standing under my pear tree. This pear tree was here when I moved in. It's an Anjou pear tree. I am pretty sure I was trying to recollect and remember what I heard in the passing of purchasing my home. And I believe I heard Anjou, but it is in bloom right now. It is alive with bees. I'm not sure if you can hear that buzz, but it is so beautiful. I'm hoping to get fruit. This didn't fruit. I have two other pear trees here, but this did not fruit last year, but it was an off year for fruiting. My neighbors didn't get fruit on their trees either. I'm not sure what was going on last year, but I'm really hoping, fingers crossed. Look at how beautiful this is. And in honor of the fruit trees, I was sitting there thinking, how can I build a food storage? What would be beneficial for me in my garden? And I decided bringing more fruit, fruit trees into my garden in Homestead was a play and something for me to do. So let me show you what I've planted so far. Right behind me, this is a Honeycrisp apple tree that I got and transplanted this spring. It is so beautiful and with apples you need cross-pollination. So I am planning to get some heritage apple trees here soon so it will have something to cross-pollinate with. I do have an apple tree that came with the property. I believed that it was Honeycrisp but I'm not 100% sure. But you need cross-pollinators so I wanted to get some diversity into my orchard and apple trees can live for 70 to 80 years. So I'm really excited to get an established orchard going, especially with apples because they live for so long. Right behind me right there is a cherry tree. It is a Lapin cherry tree. And that one is going to be sort of a test because I live in a cold zone. Cherries, sweet cherries are not super hardy depending on the variety but it looks great. I'm very confident because I'm by the mountains. It's more moderate as compared to some of the areas, some of the other areas around me. So that one is just going to be a test this year. See how it does. Fingers crossed. And also too, right here, it looks like we even have some cherries potentially coming in. I don't see much for cherry buds across the tree. This didn't have many flowers this spring but it looks really good and healthy. Speaking of cherry trees, I am getting two more cherry trees to try out. I love cherries. So naturally I want to have them in my orchard and they lived uh, about 15 to 20 years. So it's not a super long orchard tree like the apples will be but I want to give them a chance. And what I'm going to do is they're going to plant towards me. So as you can see right here, these two are peach trees. I'm also sitting next to a, another peach tree. So two lines of peach tree. There's a contender, a veteran, and then I have another contender right by me. But I'm going to do the same thing and plant this row of cherry trees. So I will have three peach, three cherry, 
three apple that I have planted this year and I am just so curious to see how it goes. Fruit is gonna be for fresh eating, preserving family and friends. And I love that I have the area to do that, the area to grow. And with trees, the saying is, the best time to plant a tree is yesterday because it takes time for them to establish. And the way that I planted them was I used compost and the natural native soil. I also used some plant tone. I feel like they have had a really great start. So so this is what I have going on for my fruit trees. I have two more apples to plant, two more cherries, and I might be done for the season, but I say that. And then I'm going to go to the nursery and be like, oh, I think I need 10 more fruit trees. Anyways, right behind me here is, like I was showing you, the peach trees. These are colder hardy peach trees, the contenders and the veterans. And because I live in that zone, I don't live down in Georgia where peaches are abundant. I had to get some sweet peaches uh, that are going to be cold hardy for uh, colder zones. And these were the best varieties and they seem to be doing really great, really happy. And I am really looking forward to peaches. So let me go show you what we have going on for the rest of our fruit, our vegetables, and some of this and some of that. Here is a better shot of my peach trees. You can see peach, peach, peach. Then I'll do cherry, cherry, cherry. And, you know, fingers crossed. I have them off to a good start. Created a big ring so the grass doesn't creep up. Been making sure that they get their water, nutrients, and yeah, big hopes for my fruit orchard. Behind me right here is my other apple tree, which I'm pretty sure it is a Honeycrisp tree. I didn't plant it. As you can see, it's pretty big but I feel like in passing it was a honey crisp, but I didn't get any apples last year. But I know when I came here two years ago, when I was buying the house, there were apples. So I don't know if last year was an off year or what. So curious to see what the apples do this year. My raspberries are coming in. One thing I need to do is I need to amend this soil. So this is my raised box of raspberries. I have been weeding, I'm a little behind, but I'm excited because ra more raspberries are coming in. There's even little strawberries right here. And there was some right here. So some strawberries have found their way in here. I'm okay with that. I don't know how well they'll do because the raspberries are gonna get thick and strawberries need sunshine. And then over here is my in-ground raspberry patch. This one is a little rough. I have to chop that down. That's like a tree. But it's a little rough looking just because it has to compete with the grass. I see back when they planned them, they tried to do tarp, but it hasn't really worked. So I have to clean this up. I don't have anything going in the greenhouse right now. I don't know if I will this year. My goal in the next month, hopefully, is to clean these out. I would love to have these. These would be great even for gardening during the winter or colder times because we have these tops that will help concentrate the heat and the sunlight in there. So these have become overgrown. I've noticed that grass just grows and you just find grass everywhere. So you have to be on top of it, but I'm learning and it's really great and I'm happy with where my garden is at compared to last year. This is my blackberry bed. So I need to get in and just cut down all these shoots. As you can see, the blackberries are starting to grow. I didn't get any blackberries last year. They leafed out, but no berries. I believe these are raspberries. Um, and just like tree seeds that have floated over. But that is something I still need to do to help encourage the growth. And I don't know if I'm expecting much from the blackberries. If any of you guys know much about blackberries, you can give me some tips. If they don't fruit out this year, I am just gonna take them out and I'm gonna plant some other stuff, maybe cultivate this for blueberries. Here is my garlic bed. This is everything that I planted last fall and it is coming in beautifully and then down here i have planted some peas you can see they are starting to come up here and here those are just weeds here here and just sporadically through so i have green beans coming up again competing with the grass i have realized i need to tarp things down create a slit put the seed in but you can see like right there, that's another little pea. So I'm excited for that. 
One of the very best parts of my garden, one of my favorites, is the bees. So I have four hives behind me. I brought this hive and the other two nukes in, and I filmed that for you guys. This is my surviving hive. As you can see, it is doing wonderful. They are so happy. There's so much for them to pollinate around here, and that's what I'm trying to cultivate for them. Behind their hive, I'm planning to do like a little like flower bed with all kinds of flowers, but I set up a um, I set up a calendar so it's like a rolling pollination for them so they always have something to gather pollen from. So that's another activity that I want to do, another project activity that I want to do is set them up a little field of their own. Right now they're so happy in my pear and fruit trees, but yes, I love hanging out with the bees. They are just so peaceful out here. Behind the bees, I have rhubarb tons and tons of rhubarb more than I could ever use I've already given some away and it grows and it's great so I might just have to make some rhubarb jelly here soon and preserve that because I did not get around to making dandelion jelly this year with everything I had going on with getting the garden ready and planting the trees I just didn't have time to go gather dandelion so the rhubarb has kind of gotten out of it and I really want to make some jelly so I'm going to do that this is my last little garden bed and I planted greens in here. So I'm gonna have the lettuce and I have some broccoli and just a different variety of lettuces, which I'm really excited about. Make fresh sandwiches and salads and give them to my chickens. And so that's what I have going on here. Soon I'm gonna plant tomatoes up there. It hasn't passed my last frost date yet. So I'm waiting on the tomatoes, the peppers and all that, but that'll be at the other end. So I still have some cleaning up to do. So, so far this year, it is looking great. Things are going along smoothly. I'm so happy with where my garden is going. And I'm really looking forward to tying in the vegetables that I produce into my food storage with canning, also the fruit in the future. Those fruit trees are an investment with the canning and feeding my family and friends. So I'm really looking into the future when I'm thinking about my garden. I am back under my pear tree. I hope you guys enjoyed that tour. Could kind of see into what I'm thinking. I have so much more room to expand now that I have this fencing to keep the deer out. The deer are an issue with shrubs and vegetables and fruit trees. And so it has been such a relief. I am so happy with where I'm at compared to last year. The garden was just not something that I could get to last year. I really did more of the dairy cow because having to deal with the deer was just, oh man, I tried. It was problematic. That's why we have this, you know, build the wall around the garden and I'm so happy for it. I'm really looking forward to the future and the abundance that hopefully this garden and the sacred land produces. And I appreciate you guys so much. I hope that you enjoyed this tour and it was peaceful and relaxing. If you have any tips or anything that you want to tell me, make sure to comment down below and don't do anything I want to do, but have a good day. Bye you guys.